Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at why EMFs and currents are induced in uh, different scenarios, and specifically looking in detail at why we get an EMF when we move a conductor perpendicular to a magnetic field. And then we'll go on to look at alternating and direct currents and how we can use those to induce a current from a stationary coil in another stationary coil. Okay, so first of all, a quick review of Fleming's left-hand rule that we're going to be using. So this applies specifically when a charge is moving perpendicular to a magnetic field and in no other scenario. So our thumb tells us the direction of a force experienced by a positive charge, I is the direction of travel of the charge, and B is the, or well, the first thing is the direction of the magnetic field. And the other kind of conclusion from this that isn't often referenced is that if the charge is moving parallel to the magnetic field, we're not going to get any force at all. Okay, so that's Fleming's left-hand rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to first of all explain what we mean by an EMF, and then we'll explain how one can be induced in a material. So when we use EMF or electromotive force, uh, which is quite often what we use to describe batteries, power sources, all those kind of things, all that really means is something with a charge gradient. And what that means is that it's something that has different charge in different regions. So like a battery like this one has a positive charge in one region and a negative charge in another. So it has a charge gradient or a difference in charge. And if we connect a conductor between those two regions, charges will flow between them. So in a circuit, electrons will move from the negative to the positive to eliminate that charge difference. But if we don't have a conductor, then the charge difference will just stay. Okay, so that's EMF. So let's have a look at how we get an EMF. So the scenario we've got, so we've set up a field going across the page. And we've, what I've got is a wire we can see in there that's being moved down into the page. So if we start setting up our Fleming's left-hand rule, we can see our finger, first finger, should be going across the page, going from north to south. And our charges are moving down into the page, so my middle finger is pointing into the plane of the page. So you can see your, from your thumb that positive charges are going to move downwards, and that therefore negative charges, or electrons, would move upwards. So that's when we're moving the conductor, and it has to be a conductor because you need something with free electrons, moving down into the page, we can see that the negative and positive charges would move in opposite directions. So we've got a charge gradient, which means we've induced an EMF. Okay, so that's an EMF. But what about a current? Well, if we now connect this wire into a complete circuit, so we're still moving the wire down into the page, but this time it's now in a complete circuit with an ammeter, or probably a milliameter in reality, they're quite small. So if we move it down to the page, instead of just inducing an EMF, we're also therefore going to induce a current, because the negative charge will move to the positive region there. So some terminology at this point. So when scientists were starting to work with electricity when they were discovering this, scientists thought electricity was the flow of positive charge. So where you can see it labeled conventional current, that's where they thought the current was going, the flow of positive charge. We now know electricity is the flow of electrons, so we call that electron flow. So we can see that that one is going around from the top all the way around to the bottom. So it's going clockwise in our diagram there. Okay, so that's why we get EMFs and currents induced when we move a wire through a magnetic field. It's due to the force on the chart moving charges from the magnetic field. Okay, so now what we're going to look at is uh, alternating direct current and how we can induce two stationary coils to induce a current, which is the basis of wireless charging or induction charging. So let's first of all have a look at a slightly different scenario. So we just saw if we move a wire perpendicular to a magnetic field, a current is induced in the wire or an EMF is induced in the wire. But we can actually get the same effect 
if we move the magnet instead of the coil. So it doesn't have to be the wire moving, we can be moving the magnet as well. As long as there are magnetic field lines cutting through the wire, we will detect a current. But if the magnet becomes stationary, then we're not going to get an EMF or a current anymore, and we're not going to detect anything. So more generally speaking, if we have these field lines, these fluxons cutting through a conductor, we will get a current or EMF induced. That's the idea. Okay, so let's quickly look at the types of currents that we can get. So a battery that you use in circuits that you build in school is supplying a fixed current and it's a fixed EMF. So we call that a direct current, a current uh, that stays the same the whole time. It doesn't change direction and it doesn't change magnitude. But in the national grid, where we have things called generators, those do not do that at all. They generate an EMF, which follows a sine wave style pattern like you can see in blue on the diagram. And because the EMF is a sine wave, that also means the current follows a sine wave. And we call that alternating current. And this is going to be important in terms of how a stationary coil induces a current in another stationary coil. Okay, so those are the two currents. So what we've got at the bottom is we've got a coil with an alternating current passing through it. So if you have a DC current, that means you get a stationary magnetic field around the, the wire. But if you have an alternating current, that means the magnetic field is constantly moving, changing its magnitude, changing its direction. So the, what I want you to imagine is these flux lines you can see on the page are moving around, they're moving up and down, side to side, changing direction all of the time. So we've managed to create another scenario in which these flux lines cut through the wire because the field is moving due to the alternating current. And if you have flux lines cutting through a conductor, we are going to induce a current in that conductor. And this is the basis of wireless charging by induction anyway. You and also anyone has an induction cooker or seen one of those. This is the process going on there as well. AC current in one coil induces an AC current in another one. Uh, but even though there's an air gap between them. OK, so that finishes off the fast last stage, how we can use a stationary coil to induce a current in another stationary coil. So what you need to do at this point is reflect on whether you can do each of these five things. And if you can't, this is the time to go back and take a look at what with those things that you don't know.